Coach, did you have uh, smelling salts in your purse at halftime or something that you broke out? <laughs> I just know that this team, I mean, we're due for our run. Um, you know, in that game, we found ourselves down early, and, and at that time, you've got to have a certain mentality, like, okay, it's time to, time to turn it on and play. I think for us, also, it's a quick turnaround, and this team is learning how to win, and, um, you know, you have a, a big game, and the thing about yesterday was that, you know, that was, that was easy. You know, we are up by 20. That, that was easy. Like, this win's almost a little bit more gratifying because it's a hard win. So you, you go through some adversity and you want to see how your team responds and when their heels are kind of when they're on their back. So for us, I think it was a good thing to get through, see the two different types of wins and how do you handle winning, you know, when you're up by a lot and how do you handle adversity when you have to come from behind. So the tale of two days, but coming out on the, the W side is a good thing for us. Now, did you talk to them yesterday after, after yesterday's big win about maybe falling into that trap game scenario? Yeah, we did. I mean, we, we said we have to come out and be just as energized and just as focused and just as ready. Um, you know, I think for us it was, you know, we, we didn't hit as, we were bunnies we were missing and we just had that lid on the basket. So we needed to compose a little bit more, um, go off to, uh, because they were just rattling in and out it seemed for us. So, okay, when you got a tough shooting night, how defensively are you going to make that up? What did you tell them in the first half? Because it seemed like whenever Katie Scott went out, the ball movement, wasn't as good, the movement, the players moving without the ball wasn't as good, and the effort on the 50-50 ball just wasn't there. Yeah, I don't know if it was because we were retired or it was early or, or what, but we definitely didn't get in a groove until about that second half. Um, so it was just a little bit of a wake-up call for us, like, hey, why, why reinvent the wheel? What we were doing offensively and movement-wise was working yesterday. So we just got back to basics of cutting harder, um, rebounding harder, I think. Tierra kind of start us, up, us off with that rebound put back. That was kind of a momentum one for us. And that's like a winning play. We call those winning plays. Um, the harder plays, the 50-50 balls, the rebounds, the offensive rebounds, the charges, the steals. So we had to make more winning plays in that second half. Now um, the, the press looked a lot more crisp the second half. So what did you tell them? Uh, more ball pressure. We're just kind of letting them walk it down the floor, which is totally not us. So a little bit more ball pressure and then being ready to, to jump a trap. Um, we weren't really ready in a stance. We didn't have great positioning, so we fixed our positioning a little bit, and that helped. Mm -hmm. It seemed like Tierra made about three plays to start the second half that really got it going. You know, whether it was a pass, a rebound, a, a drive, it, was that the kind of transfer of energy you saw in the lock, halftime locker? Yeah, well, she got in foul trouble, so she was probably sitting there with restless leg syndrome, just ready to hop in and chomping at the bit. Um, so we knew we could go to her right away and she'd have a lot of energy. We talked about exploding up towards the rim. She was leaving them short. Um, so she did a great job of just kind of hearing that, being coachable, and then going and executing on the floor. And you know, we, we knew she was kind of the hot hand and she's really good around the rim, especially with those rebounds. She can sky high and rebound amongst the best. So I told her, kind of challenged her, we want you to get those rebound putbacks and make those big plays for us. And was that whole quarter what you want to see from a senior, like in a moment in a game like this for what Nana did? Yeah, I mean, she hit some clutch, big time shots for us. And that's a testament to her work ethic. I mean, you guys don't see it, but she's in the gym every day before practice, after practice, days off. Coach, will you come shoot with me? And our coaches go and they rebound for her. And so we have all the confidence in the world in her. So I always tell our kids, like, you want confidence out on the floor? Get reps. Get reps. Get in the gym. Get reps. So that's what she did, and she came out big for us for sure with hitting those shots. You talked about two things after the game yesterday that you wanted to improve: rebounding and transition D. It seemed like it improved. It came a little maybe late. It was the second half difference, right? Yeah, um, rebounding, and I and I get like you are a great rebounding team if you can force that many turnovers, take more shots than them, and out rebound them. Like that's our goal. Like that's tough to do. You know we. At one point last game, um, we had about as many field goals made as they had shot. So there's not a lot of rebounds, you know, defensive rebounds to be had as, um, as you'd think. But if we're gonna out-rebound a team, that means we're doing a really, 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 really good job rebounding um, and turning them over. And if you can put those things together and get those extra possessions or that one and done, so big, it's huge. As the season gets deeper, is there an eye on the bigger picture now? You put yourself in second place and CBU's kind of laying out an unbelievable standard out there for you guys to keep up with. 
Yeah, I, I mean, from day one, every game matters in this league because um, you have teams that can qualify for the tournament, can't qualify. So your regular season is is big. You have to take care of, of business at conference time. So for us, it's it's got to be a game by game, but you also have to look at the implications that that plays out in March. So I think there is a, a bigger prize and a bigger picture, but um, there will never be that big prize or picture if you don't settle in and take care of next up, next up. And next up is kind of hard when you have these back to back. They were hungry today. They came out with a spark and you know, they're just getting into the groove of things a, a little bit later than most teams. They're a good team and very, very capable. So I think for us, you know, you gotta take care of each game and when you take care of business, hopefully that leads to, to good things down the line. Those, those wins and losses matter more than anything. But what was it like to see your team on Sports Center last night? Oh my gosh, so cool. Tave, she's famous now, right? Um, but for us too, those are just like, they're fun plays. And then to see how many of her teammates retweeted it or said, congrats, Tave, or was so in her corner, like that to me is what it's all about. Like, it was the Tavia show on Sports Center, but her teammates were so happy for her. So the fact that everyone's got each other's back and are hooping and hollering or getting rowdy for Tavia, that's a pretty neat thing to see. And whenever you can hear Grand Canyon on Sports Center, that's always a good thing too. And today you followed up with another highlight reel. That LP half court shot might have been the beginning of turning the whole momentum of things because they were on a 15 yes. run. Sports Center, yeah, <laughs> halftime, LP. Uh, maybe it can go higher than number eight. We can go two in a row, but. For, that one was a great, I mean, she swished it. It wasn't like bank off the board. I mean, that looked good. Um, I told her, I was like, you got two dribbles and a shot. And she makes those all the time in practice. So we're like, LP, you get the ball, two dribbles and shot. And she just did what we see every day in practice. And that three point shooting continued as three in a row. You feel like you've hit a consistent base. It was a a little drop off late in the game, but yeah. then Katie hit the one that sealed it. Yeah, nine for 23, I mean, that's that's good for us. And if we continue to hit outside shots, it'll open up our interior. Um, so when you've got shooters like Katie and Nana on the perimeter, it's gonna open things for like Tierra and Kennedy. And that that to me, and LP's, oh my gosh, her, her shots come so far. You can see she's got lift on it now. She's confident. Um, she's really a threat going to the rim or shooting the three and our guards are kind of morphing into that combo of like I'm a three level scorer I can score from the three I can penetrate and get to the rim or you know Nana's got a great jumper LP's got a great floater um, that is very very dangerous if you can be a three level scorer because then they have to guard you all over the floor is this Chiefs red yeah this is my subtle nod to the Chiefs today. I mean, I'm a Missourian, you know, and, and my husband is from, born and raised Kansas City, so we've been Chiefs fans way back when it wasn't even cool. So now it's cool that they're in the Super Bowl, and yeah, I've got to say go Chiefs. <laughs> Coach, one more question. Uh, you're going to take your act on the road now. It's been a while. Uh, what's your focus as far as the, the mentality of your team? Routine. I mean, when you're on the road, you, you have to make sure that all right, you're still eating and getting in bed and going up and getting ready for shoot around and pregame meal. Like, I think this team does really well with routine. So we have to have our road routine and that focus and that mentality um, to win on the road is really, really hard, but we can. Um, and then I think we will if we can definitely just be focused and come out with energy. You know, you don't have this great atmosphere when you're on the road. So where does that energy come from? It, internal, I mean, it generates from within our team and within um, our players and our staff and our managers. That I, I love them to death because they get wild over there. They're basically our, our crowd on the road. So I think we just have to generate our own energy and kind of play like we are at home.